this is, this is, this is. Welcome to a brand new episode of the My Career Podcast. I'm your host. That's right. What's up? I am a fiend lately for breakfast burritos. Yes, always. But breakfast cereal. This isn't new. It's just new again. It's like I, I go through phases. Like, But I'm into cereal lately. I can't get enough of cereal. Like I love it so much. <laughs> I could have it every day. I mean, I don't necessarily have it every day, but I could. I know it's not the best thing to eat um but i don't know i'm just i just can't get enough don't stop till you get enough Mm, mm, mm. so anyway um i've been eating like granola Uh, my my mo is i actually put i have this this it's like what is it kind bar have you heard of the the granola bars kind they're called kind well they they also have a product that is just granola it's just in a bag and you can put it in cereal you, you can eat it like cereal you can you can put it on um, you know with yogurt things like that you know so anyway it's like that style it's 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 granola and and i get the peanut butter granola i love peanut butter granola it's so good and back like when i was on a kick years ago i would get this bulk it wasn't peanut butter granola. It was some other kind of granola, but it was like hemp granola or something that I would get from, from bulk foods at like Fred Meyer and which is a grocery store called Fred Meyer. And, um, you know, they, they just have like a good bulk section. So if you've got one of those and you like bulk foods, you can get that. But anyway, but this, what I've been eating lately is this kind, um, kind bar i don't know what the it's just called kind kind granola or something like that and i'm just hooked on it so i put that down like a layer of granola it's like a base layer because that's like the hearty part of the cereal you know and then and then i'll pour cereal on top of that like chocolate chocolate kicks chocolate uh recent oh Reese's, I think it's, is it Reese's Kicks? Reese's, um, I don't know what the actual cereal is because it's nothing like the actual cereal, but it's it's like just little round balls and it's like Reese's peanut butter. Like I was doing that a, a little while ago, but lately, <laughs> I just remember that. Wow. Because um, my kids, you know, I, I wouldn't normally buy this stuff. My, my kids get it and they want to try all the different cereals. And so I get to try the different cereals, and I never got to do that when I was a kid. My my mom my 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 mom did not let me eat sugary foods when I was a kid, so now I can do it. I'm not saying it's good, parents. You understand it's not good, but you know whatever. <laughs> I love it too much. So uh, so what I do is I have the base layer of granola, and then I uh, I uh, I put down. Lately, it's been. Chocolate Rice Krispies. That's right. Cocoa Rice Krispies. It's so good. That. Um, chocolate Cheerios. Chocolate Cheerios is almost the healthiest of all the chocolate cereals. So <laughs> I'm going to write this down. Chocolate cereals. Because not only, not only am I eating a lot of chocolate cereal with peanut butter, but... I went from, I went from like when I was a kid, I would eat just, uh, I would eat my milk with 2% milk, did that most of my life. And then at some point I just, the milk was like, uh, it's not that I, I I drink milk, you know, I, I eat things with milk in it, but when it comes to drinks, when it comes to anything liquidy, uh, the dairy in the milk I don't know. It just gets in my mouth and I just don't like it. Gets in, of course it gets in your mouth, right? I just don't like it that much. You, you know, even though it, it, like like when I'm talking about drinks, I'm talking about like Starbucks drinks or like a coffee place when you go and get a coffee with creamer in it. I don't know. I don't like the I don't like the milk anymore. Even when I get um those matcha, those green tea matchas. Those are so good. I get iced. I don't get the hot ones. I get it iced. It's got the sweetener in it. Whatever the matcha taste is, is is like sweet. And then 
I don't like that with regular like half and half or like cream or anything. I like it with either almond milk. It depends on what the place has, but if it's almond milk or whatever, I like it like that because it just it cuts it down slightly, but then it's 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 made with almond. It's made with a milk, you know, but the non-dairy I prefer. So I started eating my cereal with almond milk years and years and years ago. This long time ago. Just regular almond milk. Go to Costco, get boxes of it, sit on the shelves, whatever. But about a year ago, um, I decided to try banana almond milk. Almond banana milk. And it was terrible. Not going to lie. It was terrible. I got it at Costco. Um, I ordered probably, or not in order. I got probably too many. I got like a couple boxes because I was like, this can't be bad, right? This is going to be good. <laughs> yes, it can be. Because I like bananas, but it just doesn't taste real. And I'm just like, yeah, what am I thinking? You know, it's not going to be, it's going to be like a scratch and sniff banana flavor. And you know what I mean by scratch and sniff. Like when you think about banana, you smell an actual banana, you taste an actual banana, it's got a, it's got a taste to it. But then you smell a chemical banana smell. Like this is what banana smells like. It's always some w weird different smell that's not really banana. And there's other fruits like that. There's other smells like that, you know, when it comes to scratch and sniff. I think like the pizza. The pizza just smells like some sort of like, maybe it almost smells like a like dried pizza crust or, or, or pizza pizza paste that you had put down on the pizza. Um, it, it's got that oregano vibe to it, but it doesn't actually smell like pizza. Anyway, scratch and sniff chocolate cereal. And so this chocolate, so, so I'm on this chocolate kick and I try the bananas and not the bananas, but the banana flavored almond milk. It was terrible. Uh, you know, I still have it. It's in my basement right now in Bremerton. And, uh, I, Every now and again, like if I run out of something, I might like go and look for, for almond milk and I'll see those and I'll be like, ah, uh, and I'll be reminded of my utter stupidity. But hey, I'm, I'm, um, I'm adventurous when it comes to cereal and food. So anyway, um, chocolate Cheerios, the rice, chocolate Rice Krispies, that works really well with that peanut butter granola base and it just blends well together because I don't necessarily want to have just the no substance of of the the rice krispies or whatever it is the cereal I'm eating could be like you know frosted flakes and and to be honest that's one of the healthier of the sugary breakfast cereals frosted flakes love it can't get enough never had it when I was a kid only when we were like on special occasions, I was at a friend's house and they had it. It's like, oh my gosh, they, you have frosted flakes? Can I try that? So, uh, yeah, my mom made me a weirdo. She made she made my clothes when I was a kid. She would literally sew my pants, my shirts, not every single stitch. I would get maybe one store bought set of clothes a year um, before school, but anything else was pretty much a hand me down or she would sew it. Just beep, deep, deep. So she had a sewing machine. She had patterns. She would she would get these patterns. Like it was full on like hippie, like um, little house on the prairie vibes. Like I love you, mom, and I do not. I do. I am not mad at you for for making my clothes. I think that's actually pretty cool, and and I know she did it because it was, it was you know inexpensive to do. It was it was. Uh, she's like I might as well do this, you know save some money but anyway back to the cereal she did she also didn't let me you know watch um a lot, we didn't have many channels and and i wasn't allowed to watch a lot of things but uh wasn't allowed to watch a lot of things that my friends were allowed to watch i would say i, I was allowed to watch the smurfs which i was kind of surprised that that my parents let me watch the smurfs being they, they were very liberal when it came to like a lot of things and and then very conservative about other things but um 
I thought it was reasonable to be honest. Like, like they could have done a better job at locking down on some of the rules. To be honest, like they they didn't really uh, enforce a lot. But I did get spanked as a kid. I did. Um, it didn't break me. Apparently, I don't know. I'm probably weird because of it, but no, I'm not going to blame that. Uh, I don't think about it too often, so I think I'm all right. But uh, anyway, back to the cereal. <laughs> Scratch and sniff breakfast cereal flavors. Um, so I finally I finally found that there was a chocolate almond milk. And I'm like, what? Chocolate almond milk? Um, I think it's called Blue Diamond Blue Diamond's the flavor, or not, sorry, the brand name of, of the uh, the type that I can get in, in the grocery store that I go to, and and it, it seems pretty good. There's, like, no MSG. There's no, like, additives and preservatives and things like that. Um, I wonder if there is a preservative of some kind in there, uh, honestly. I, but I know that the, on the back, where they say, no, there's no, there's a bunch of things that there's no of. <laughs> so, anyway... I came, I locked it in full circle with the chocolate, and so I've got, and and peanut butter, so I've got the peanut butter granola, I've got the chocolate cereal, whatever it is, rice-based usually, Um, and then I've got the chocolate almond milk mixed on top, and it's so good. It's so, it's not so good that it's like, it's not, that, I'll say that the chocolate milk does not taste like chocolate milk. It's not something you would want to drink by itself like you would maybe like actual chocolate milk. But if you dr- like I've I tried it, you know, I, I drank some and it's like it literally tastes like almond milk with a chocolate taste, but not a sugary taste. So not a sugary chocolate taste. So it tastes like almost like a little bit of cocoa. And it doesn't taste bitter like unsweetened chocolate or anything like that, but it doesn't taste super sweet at all, which I actually personally like because my almond milk is honestly just there for lubrication. It's there for the least amount of whatever it is. The chocolate is just like a nice, I get the unsweetened almond milk always, not never sweetened, and that's that's key. So unsweetened chocolate almond milk um, or regular almond milk if you don't want to go crazy with chocolate. But that's just me. That's just I'm tro- chocolate crazy. I'm a chocolate fiend. And um, I can't get enough of it. You know, so, uh, you know, a lot of times, honestly, I feel like that's my kryptonite. I'll tell myself I'm not going to eat at night. And, and if I if I really am not going to eat at night, um, I don't eat at night. But usually it has something to do with uh, if I weigh myself, and I realize I'm really not that I'm not weighing a lot, then I'll start eating more, you know, and then then I then I tell myself, justify it in my own mind. OK, I can eat more. I can eat more cereal because uh, I have not been gaining a bunch of pounds like it feels like I am all the time. But um, because I always feel full like a lot of like most of my life. I'm very, very lucky that, um, you know, I get up. I usually eat breakfast burritos around 11 a.m. I would say and I'm not I get up earlier than that. I get like 8:30, 9, something like that. But um and if I have something that I have to be up earlier for, I'll get up earlier. But but if it's just MXP a regular studio day, I don't I'm I'm not up before 8:30 usually. And um I'll get up and I'll I'll hang with the kids, hang with the family and sometimes go running, not always, but sometimes I'll go running and that's usually in the morning and feed the dog feed one of the dogs holly feeds the other dog um in the morning and and then i'm ready to eat and that's usually like by that time after i've hung out with the kids and done whatever um it's 11 so i'll eat and then i'll after that go to work and 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 if i've got to be out of there earlier sometimes i just won't eat at breakfast burritos i'll just leave and i'll go and then i'll come back later and eat or i won't eat at all um that's usually rare. I'll usually, f- if I know I'm going to be busy, I'll grab a burrito because I, I don't want to work um, with no burritos on my stomach. So <laughs> very privileged, very, very privileged, very grateful for it. So, so yeah, you know, my parents did not screw me up. 
and uh you know i i feel like i've probably screwed myself up if anything um you know but we all we all can live and learn and and that's i think why i'm here it's why i love to do this podcast even is is i learn a lot from it um not just from you know me talking to you but but from from guests and and obviously from your questions too um i would love to get some more questions about about life you know and i love the the mxpx questions keep them coming absolutely but if you want to talk about anything else i'm open to it would love to to dive in uh if you want to call in the number is one three six zero eight three zero six 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 zero and uh maybe you'll be on the podcast let's get into the first the first voicemail here Hey, Mike. Second time caller. This is Bill from Brockport, Pennsylvania again. Had a quick question. I was watching some of the Newfound Glory videos that are coming out to promote their new acoustic album. And was just reminded, which one of those things I always knew, but just reminded about Jordan's MXPX tattoo on his elbow and how you felt about bands that kind of use you guys as a stepping stone to get where they are like not took your sound but were strongly influenced by you and exceeded where you guys were at was there ever any bitterness towards that or was it always kind of supportive as it seemed in the public eye just curious about that kind of aspect of it and where you guys stood with what you got out of the deal versus where other people got out of the same deal thanks mike have a good one but yeah that's an interesting question bill um was i ever bitter no i mean you know i can't lie and say i never thought about good charlotte and how big they got and but that's just the thing is like we always had this thing you know with mxpx all of our good stage techs moved on to bigger bigger bands you know much bigger and we always felt like, okay, that means we're doing something right. We're training these guys up right. We have a good camp. We have a good culture. And, yeah, I mean, maybe for a second for, like, you know, in, in your – everybody has that sort of, like, selfish moment where they think something – uh, selfishly, they're jealous about something. But then you you, you – you realize, okay, you take a step back and you, you get some perspective and, 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 and you, you think about, one, you can't judge and you can't compare yourself to other people because everybody's in a different place. Everybody's coming from a different place. Everybody has their own story. And, and your story, to be honest, can move you, can, can, can propel you in different directions depending on what that story is. And ours certainly certainly has. Um, and, and, and I also think, well, then was then and now is now and look at us now like um geez mxpx has sure we're not we're not selling out madison square garden you know multiple nights in a row but we have an amazing career that that has been highly influential we have a huge fan base that supports every release that we make and every everything we do every show that we put on um it's just it's it's all about it's all about you know us having that perspective you know so so yeah i mean that's a very real idea that you just mentioned there but but it's something that i think is is a very human emotion and and it's like when you're at your job and your buddy at your job gets promoted that's it was right alongside you and you kind of wonder you're like that's great you know it's, i'm happy for my friend you also wonder like what's wrong with me like why didn't i get the promotion you know and again it's not even it's not even the obviously the same thing but but with with being an, an artist all you can sure we all have like this is how i look at being an artist <laughs> I'm actually just 
fleshing this out of my mind right now. So maybe maybe I'll change my mind later. But being an artist, y- you rely on your talent and your work ethic and your team around you. But there's going to be things that come up that, that you didn't expect. Emergencies, say, in life that happen. Things that knock you down a peg. Things that, that push you in a direction that you, you didn't expect to go. Uh, whatever it is, right? And it's a lot like playing in professional sports where the referee, say in an NFL game, you know, everybody knows I'm a big NFL fan. The referees sometimes make calls that alter the outcome of the game. And this has happened with everybody's favorite team. I mean, it happened with the Saints. They, you know, they should have gone to the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Ridiculous. Uh, Ridiculous no call. Uh, on pass interference and things like that have happened throughout history, right? And this is what I always say, though, about that, especially to my team. You know, I, I say this about the Seattle Seahawks. I was like, I'll be like, you know, if they played well enough to win this game, they wouldn't need to rely on the refs calling them or not calling a penalty. Like, if if it comes down to a penalty, your players did not do what they needed to do. And so I feel like a lot in the same ways, um, when it comes to being in a band, you got to play the game. Well, you know, it comes down to you, you, you know, there are things out of your control, you know, record labels, um, the way people perceive you in the press, in the media online these days. Um, it's not always in your control. Things can happen to go haywire, but again, I really feel like if you're really paying attention, you got to control those those narratives too. I mean, I'm not certainly trying to control narratives for MXPX this or that. You know, I'm just doing my thing. But but if I needed to, I, I you know, a good example, a good example was years ago. Um. I googled MXPX, uh, you know, please do it, check it out, and I and I looked at the images tab, and the images were like very random stuff. I mean, it was it was us, it was a lot of us, but it wasn't enough us. And now, so so my goal was, okay, I want it to be more poking at your punk when you open when you google mxpx i want the poking at your punk to be a lot of the images you see because that's our logo that, that that's our logo that's how people know us and if they see that and they know of mxpx they're gonna know oh that's mxpx so i mean you don't even need to be able to read english to know that's mxpx right like of course you have to know of us you know, you might see that and not know anything about us and go, I've recognized that thing, but I don't know why. Like that happens a lot. And that's what, you know, you almost want that. You want, you want to be, you want to be everywhere so that people that don't even know you, know you. So my goal was, I remember talking to my mom about this and I was like, we want to, I mean, I don't know what we really did, but (laughs) we just, I don't know. We just, you know, more of our designs were poking at your punk. Like more, more everything was poking at your punk at that point. And now, and I'm not googling this to prove myself right, and I might be wrong, but now I think the majority of what you see is going to be the poking at your punk when you Google MXPX. And and it's also beautiful that the first thing you see is our website at the top. Should be anyway. I mean, I, I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, mxpx.com all right i hope that answered your question bill um and bill this is there's another one from you Let's hey see. mike it's bill from rockport again i'm sure you can edit this in the podcast Here it is. but it's a kind of a follow-up to the whole tattoo type of deal and where people got um reason that kind of question that was because i discovered bands like all and bad religion through no effects because it's fat Mike's tattoos. So I was wondering if that played any part into anything or if you guys had any sort of good or bad vibe coming towards that type of stuff. Like 
that's how I discovered a lot of bands, honestly, in my early age was T-shirts and tattoos that other bands had. So I was just curious how that affected you guys and if you had any sort of good or bad vibes coming from that. Thanks again. This is Bill. Have a good one. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'll just follow up with that, Bill. Um, yeah, tattooed tattoo discover you know to discover music i don't remember really i mean i definitely remember looking at tattoos on band members but i feel like i was already into i was already into the descendants i was already into you know bad religion and no effects and rancid and um you know i was i was already into those guys before i really knew what any of them looked like um and maybe it's just because of like the the air like the I don't know how old you are, Bill, but uh, this was probably like early '90s, early early '90s. Um, just started MXPX in '92, and I know that I wore T-shirts. Like I, I had a lag, you know. No, Andy had a lag wagon T-shirt. I had a No Effects T-shirt. Um, you know. A buddy of mine had like a Misfits t-shirt. I mean, we all had like, we'd all get like a punk shirt, you know, or whatever. Um, but but as far as discovering other punk bands, yeah, pro I, like like I said, I think at that point I was already on my way. Like I was discovering punk bands by seeing seeing them and just checking out stuff. And um, but I definitely know that that that's definitely a great way to to find bands is, is look at your favorite bands. Look at the t-shirts they're wearing, like poking at you, the artwork with Andy and I and, and Yuri on the, in, on the insert and you fold it open. We're wearing those shirts. I had, we had just gone to that show, that no effects show at the King cat theater in Seattle and face to face opened and one other band played, I think, I don't remember who Thomas Nesky would remember, but, you know, a bunch of people from, from our school and our punk scene in Bremerton w was there, and it it was a show that a lot of people were at, you know, that that was like when No Effects kind of like really started solidifying themselves in the scene, and, and, and that was cool to see, you know, and I feel like MXPX definitely, you know, followed in those footsteps in, in, in just starting to tour all over the place because this was like pre this was pre touring for mxpx this was still we were still in high school at the time and uh mxpx didn't do tour until 1995 that was our first tour the summer of after we graduated high school so yeah yeah good times uh good way to discover t-shirts tattoos um social distortion was was always and still is a, a, you know one of my favorites um definitely they have their own sound, even though it's derived from very traditional Americana style music, country, rock and roll, all of that punk rock, all mixed together, slowed down in that social D style. Um, I just love it. You know, I love that all this, all the bands you you hear have their own sound, even though punk is a sound, even pop punk is a sound. The best bands have their own sound. And I would hope that we have we have an MXPX sound, and I really feel like we do. But um, you know, I hope people see that as well or hear that as well. Cool. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Another one next. Thanks, Bill. Hey, Mike. It's Cyrus uh, calling in quite again here. I have a few batch of questions for you. We really only have two questions. Um, so uh, first off. Uh, I was wondering, um, off the ACEP, you guys had uh, Gray Skies Turn Blue, which I believe came before Panic, so you re-recorded that song onto Panic. Um, so I'm kind of wondering, um, what was the, like, where did the idea come from to kind of bring that song back to life to fit the context of that album? Um, and also related to Panic, uh, for my next question, um, what inspired, like, their, like, this is a pretty dark album, I think, for me, that's probably your darkest one, like, uh, so I was kind of wondering, like, what, like, inspired a lot of the lyrical, like, content for that time for you guys, um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it, uh, just kind of keeping it simple today, 
Um, thanks for uh, thanks for listening, um, and uh, can't wait to hear what you guys bring uh, to music next. See you, see you soon. Bye. Cyrus, yeah, ACEP man. That let me just think about that for a second. Um, yeah, gray skies turn blue. You know, it's actually the other way around. Even though the ACEP was recorded first and 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 released first, we actually demoed "Gray Skies Turn Blue" as a full band song for the album that we were planning, Panic. Um, and then we just did it acoustic for the ACEP. Um, so it was the, you know, the acoustic version was the first release of the song, but not, not the first thought, if that makes sense, you know. Um, I think we really like that song. That was a song that I don't usually do it this way at all, but that song in particular... I have a full band demo that I did on my on my own, meaning I did fake drums, I did keyboard, I did guitar, electric guitars, I did bass, I did vocal, I did backup vocals, everything. Because I just didn't know if it was gonna be an MXPX song and I was just like, I was just kind of experimenting a little bit. It was just like a different kind of thing because it was a da 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 with a piano or the, the keyboard. Uh, it's more of an organ vibe. But I think that's what my thinking was, the fact that it had that keyboard part, that organ part. I wasn't sure what we were going to do with it. So I demoed it completely, full band. Uh, and then I, you know, that was... And then I brought that to the band. So... How I normally do my songwriting is write the song on an acoustic guitar, have a version that's like fully, the full song on acoustic guitar with me singing. So you don't know how many times I'm just like, da, 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 screwed it up, uh, start it over, erase, da, 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 start, uh, screwed it up again, start over. You know, I'm just over and over and over and eventually I get it. And, but honestly, I think that, that makes, makes the song get into my brain enough to where I, I remember how to do it because if I'm like, and I've done this in the past where I brought songs that I didn't really know well to the guys and I'm trying to teach them a song that I don't know and I'm changing it every other time. It's like I'm changing the melody up and they're like, wait, right. and I'm like, wait, what did I just do? What did did I just do that again or was it a new thing? And they're like, no, it's different. Like you're doing it different each time. So, so I really like to like cement it into my brain because when you're, when I'm working with new ideas and new melodies, they're just floating all over the place in here and it can be too much. It can be too much. And so practice, it's the same, the same thing I do with songwriting. I do with, with l playing live. I, I, I practice and I listen and I really like cement those songs into my brain I do that with songwriting when I'm working on a new idea. If 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 it's in my brain and I don't like it in my brain, then I know it's probably a song I'm not going to finish writing. I'll just move on to something else. But um, that was Grace Guys. You wanted to know about Panic, what inspired the lyrics, and why it's so dark. I think you're probably... Uh, I mean, there are a lot. There's Waiting for the World to End. There's the darkest places, which is that that one. That one is kind of the song that encapsulates panic, the record, the, the the theme of the album. It's the darkest places. It's it's yes, panic, but also we got to shine the light on the darkest places. You know, it means do you know stand up for what's right it means. Do you? It means work hard. I mean, it's it's different for everybody. You know, it's like I I, I don't want to say it's like the same for everybody because it's not. You know, some people find so much so much freedom in in being alone and working on a project. Other people find so much freedom 
being surrounded by people, surrounded by friends, surrounded by family, whatever it is. So there's just different types out there, right? So like, but the darkest places is really, really the best representation of the whole album. Um, but waiting for, I should pl- probably pull up, pull up the uh, album and look at the songs and just go through them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've got a, somewhere here, I've got MXPX catalog. MXPX catalog, boom. Look at this, it's got like, it's got everything. I mean, just pretty much. It's got a lot, let's say. Um, Okay, so I'm looking for Panic. Here it is. Darkest Places, Young and Depressed. Okay, yeah, it's a little dark. Um, Heard that sound. That's not that. It has a, you know, you're like in a prison. Yeah, it starts out, you're in a prison. Eh, Cold Streets. Yeah, the story, how does the story end? Where will, (laughs) oh my God. Um, when will this li- how will this life end? Wrecking hotel rooms about a stalker creeping out. Um, late again. I guess that's technically negative because you're late and people never like that. Kicking and screaming also negative. Um, gray skies turn blue. There we go. There's a positive. But the lyrics, if you really listen to them, it's kind of sad. Emotional anarchist. Kind of the one that doesn't really fit in with. A theme. Call in sick also doesn't fit in with a theme. <laughs> Although I love both of those songs, to be honest. Um, get me out. All right, we're back to the theme. Get me out. Crawling around. Alone in the dark. All I need is a... Can't find this switch. All I need is a match or a spark. Something like that. Find a way out. Okay, so um, I co-wrote that with Steve Soto. Rest in peace, brother. Um, and so, I, I mean, I, I wrote all the words pretty much, but um, that just fell in line with kind of what what was happening with the record, waiting for the world to end. And then, obviously, that, that song is... I don't know. It's poetic. It's emotional. This weekend, that was a song that um, was an Arthur song, kinda. We never really released. Uh, hence the six eight time. But then it was also an MXPX song that I had written, and I took parts of that and I put it into this song called the, "This Weekend," and. I don't know. I like it. I definitely like it, but I'm not sure what what purpose it serves on this record, you know? Um, you know, it was a lot like poking at you, put anywhere but here first on the on the record, literally because it was the last song we recorded. It was, it was the last song I wrote for the record, poking at you, our first album, Anywhere But Here. And the reason it's first is just because we were excited and it was fresh in our minds. It was fresh. We're like, oh yeah, that's the one. But like there's probably a bunch of other ones that could have had a better opener, right? But but then again, now that we've all had that in our, I just threw a pen at myself. We've all had that in our lives so long. Maybe maybe it's right, just right, you know? I try not to second guess, to be honest. But why was panic sc- scary? Ah. Uh, Hmm, that's a good question. And at this point, I probably should know. Um, But I think it probably has something to do with whatever was happening in, in the world and in life. Like, you know, George W. W. Bush was president. Dick Cheney was, I mean, it was warmongering. I think, honestly, what it was was just the fact that I was, I mean, I still am very against war. Uh, Don't like it. You know, I I think if there is such a thing as a just war, 
obviously protecting your homeland is a just war, I think, um, then then I'm all for it, sure. But what I mean is just the uh, military industrial complex, you know, the, the constant warring around. Um, now, we gotta we gotta protect ourselves, obviously. So, but I, I think honestly, that's that's what I was talking about. I was just talking about. I think that was a year that I probably watched a lot of twenty four hour news, like CNN type stuff. You gotta remember, CNN in two thousand five was a different CNN than it is now. Back then, it was kind of a newer thing. Maybe it'd been around five years or so or whatever. But like that got everybody hyped in a new way. That was the beginning of this constant information overload. And, um, you know, I think, I think honestly that that's what it was that, that, that's why I wrote panic and I wrote, um, the darkest places, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, a song that's commentary. I think the second verse is talking about uh, the days are growing dark. What are we going to do? The country's in a panic when you turn on the tube. So it doesn't mean the country was really in a panic, but but I think I was just referring to the fact that these people on TV are constantly telling us how to feel, how to act, what to say, what we should be thinking. Here's how to think on this topic. That's what I was ref- referring to. And, 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 they really want people to be scared. They want people to be afraid. They want people to panic. And it's always like, oh, we don't want people to panic. So so your government's always going to lie to you when we don't want people to panic. We don't want people, you know, the, we don't want the public to hurt themselves. So we're going to lie to you. Remember that. I mean, that's something that's never going to change. And I always thought it would, uh, you know, when I was growing up, when I was a young, a young buck writing um, teenage politics, I thought someday racism would be not a thing. I was like, yeah, someday, like the, when, the, when the younger generations grow up and they're in charge of politics and they're in charge of this, the systems, racism won't exist because it's going to be this utopian thing, you know, and what I didn't realize is no, this stuff has always been there. It always will be there. And you just have to just fight your fight, you know, and, um, and, and, and things like the government lying to us, you know, I don't want to go into to any <laughs> specifics. Uh, maybe I, I would, if there was somebody on with me and we could just chat back and forth about it. But, um, but, I, but I will say, you know, it, it's just like, I've been watching all these documentaries about Three Mile Island, about things that have happened in this country um, where, oh, the, the government lied. You know, first it was the local government, then the, the big government lied, and they didn't tell you because they didn't want to cause a panic and this and that. But it just causes people to not trust. It causes distrust in our government, which is rightly so, because they constantly break our trust. Just as that's what this record's about. That's what a lot of these songs have been about. Um, I've always been against authority, and you know, I can respect authority when the authority makes sense to me. So I'm not against all authority across the board. I, I will follow laws that make sense. I will follow my parents' advice when it makes sense. I will definitely listen to what my wife tells me to do. Uh, no questions asked. So I'm not against all authority, but I am against, I'm against uh, a lot of authority. I'm against authority for the authority's sake. People get power hungry. People, you know, you, you've heard of Stanford Prison Experiment, right? Where they took ordinary people off the street, put them in, gave one group of people the authority. You're the prison guards. You're in charge. They gave the rest your prisons, your prisoners. All right. What happened? Immediately, almost immediately, <laughs> the prison guards started treating the prisoners like second-class citizens and treating them like shit and... 
it devolved into something where they literally had to stop the experiment because it was getting violent and it was getting dangerous. Human, human, humans do this. Humans do this. So it's not like I, I don't realize that. And, and I think that's why we have the worst people in government. You know, we have people that want to be in government. They want to tell others what to do. They want to be in charge. Those are the worst kind of people because by default, good people don't usually want to do that. Sure, you will, good people want to help, but usually there's just better ways to do that. I, I don't know. I would love I would love to talk this out more with somebody, but um, this is just me, just talking, just thinking. You know, like I said, you know, I don't know what I'm about to say necessarily, but but I really feel like that's panic. It was it was realizing that the media and that our society and that human nature is driving panic further and further and the internet although is amazing has so many good tools i'm i'm being able to communicate with you guys on this podcast because of the internet so it's not all bad but um there's a devil inside and he's roaming around all right that was a great question uh i enjoyed it Thanks, Cyrus. Uh, let's get to let's get to one more. Are we getting to one more? Yeah, we're gonna get to one more. Let's do one last one. Yeah, what's up, Mike? John Boy, down in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, I was just listening to your other podcast a while ago, just a few minutes ago here at the gym, talking about Super Bowl. I remember a story? Uh, you're touring with Tumble Down, I think in Mexico, and so I don't know what, exactly what happened. Ended up coming back to Texas. He hit me up. We put some party a party together at my house. Where you guys ended up jamming, and it happened to be Super Bowl Sunday, I believe. I forgot who was playing. I want to say it was the Seahawks, and I think we were checking out the game before, right when you guys rolled up, and we started setting up and stuff. And we had made made like a big party out of it. <laughs> had a keg and stuff. I was just wondering if you remember that time. That was a good time. But, uh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll hear it on the, this next podcast you're talking about. But uh, rock and roll. Thanks for the joggers, the mediums. Uh, we're back in stock. Got a pair. See ya. Heck, yeah. Dude, John Boy, thanks for calling in. Super Bowl Sunday. It must have been. Man, I'm trying to think. Because uh, I know we were at um, Jonathan Marquand's apartment when we actually watched the game. So it might have been the night before Super Bowl Sunday we played your house. But it could have been the night of Super Bowl Sunday we played your house. So yeah, you might be right, buddy. You you definitely might be right. Thanks for having us, by the way. That was a badass party. So much fun. Had a blast. That was when Tumble Down got all our, our stuff ripped off in Mexico and, and our tire busted and we just ended up having to cancel the rest of that tour and we made a made some you know last minute parties and shows happen um the corovera the corovera man yeah that that place that was um that was the the venue we played like after we played your party the next night we played the corovera which we had played there a few times uh separately from that that run um with tumble down yeah that was that was good, man. That was um, I just remember we were in your living room, and we were just it was just like tight, you know. It was just like no stage, nothing, just just uh, as house party as a show gets. And uh, you know, San Antonio, that whole scene, all your friends, all your family, and and all the people that go to shows in San Antonio, best people, man. You guys know how to party. You guys know how to have a good time. You don't usually take it too far. I would say it's just about right, you know. <laughs> Somebody always does a little bit. But, uh, man, I just always have a good time, man. I just appreciate the the good-hearted nature of people uh, in San Antonio. I feel like San Antonio is a sister city uh, to wherever I'm at, wherever I'm at, whether it's Bremerton or Waco, because – the Herreras and uh, anybody involved with MXPX or Tumble Down have, has always had a great time in San Antonio. As evidenced by 
our live album, MXPX Southbound to San Antonio. If anybody hasn't heard that, go add it to your music libraries, whatever you listen on. It's streaming everywhere. MXPX Southbound to San Antonio. Sorry to advertise there, but a lot of people don't even know that that record exists. It kind of came out and came and went uh, when we were kind of on a downtime, you know, so a lot of people didn't, uh, weren't paying attention. So it exists, and it's pretty good. So check that out, especially if you live in San Antonio. Check out Southbound to San Antonio. Uh, definitely, uh, I'm definitely proud of it. Um, it, it features uh, Agent M uh, on vocals on Tomorrow's Another Day. She comes on, on the, and does harmonies and does the second verse, and uh, she's great. So what else? You know, we... Uh, the food, the food in San Antonio. Last, anybody listening to uh, to my, uh, when was it? It was like a couple couple episodes ago. I was talking about food, just tons of food. <laughs> earlier today, well, earlier on this episode, I was talking about breakfast cereal. But um, San Antonio, oh, when I was talking about Waco, I was talking about uh, Tex-Mex. S- San Antonio has the best Tex-Mex. I mean, so good everything is so good there man can't get enough and and a lot of other good stuff too but um i love going to to downtown san antonio and hanging um john boy thanks for sticking with us all these years man always good to see you out at, at the shows whether it's mxpx or tumble down um you and your crew um yeah man that's it um all right, you guys. Until next week. Um, I know I gotta. I, I've been, I've been doing a lot of random things, like not a normal schedule lately. Um, that's not going to really be evidenced by this podcast because this podcast is pretty much the most scheduled thing that I have in my life. But um, uh, I guess what I'm saying is, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. MXPX working on things right now <laughs> still I swear I mean yeah I mean it's it's getting real hairy it's getting real busy um but not ready to announce anything yet you'll know when the time is right you'll know I appreciate you guys and your patience thank you for your patience can't keep waiting waiting for what's next when the world keeps changing all right um Bob McKnight Shout out. Check out his podcast, The Bob and Katie Show. It's everywhere. You can find it wherever you listen to this one. Um, And I appreciate you, Bob. Thank you for doing what you do. I give him a lot of last-minute assignments. So uh, he always gets it done. And uh, excellent job last week. Thanks for all your good times. Um, I I forgot I was going to... I was going to... talk of i was gonna do a question from the internet but um you know i'll just do that next time i'll do that next time that seems seems right i'm uh i'm about to finish up a book called the every i think i don't know if, yeah i think i talked about how the i was reading a book called the circle uh by dave eggers and then the next book there was a sequel called the every now that's a really long book it turns out it's like 500 something it's almost 600 pages and I'm like 80% through. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I had to stop for a while because I rent. I rent. I borrow books from the library um, on Libby, the Libby app, and then you can transfer that to Kindle. So instead of like buying books all the time, I just borrow books from the library. I, I just do it because that's what my wife does. So, you know, when in Rome. But um, that's, that's how I do it. But... uh. I had to wait a while because I couldn't read the full book in the three weeks or whatever that I had. And so I had, you know, the lending only goes three weeks and then it goes back and then somebody else gets it for a while and then you have to like get in line to loan it again. So I was in line and I just got it back. And so I'm going to finish it soon in a couple of days, I think. And then um, I'll let you guys know how it is. Um, I think I'm in the climax of it to be honest i think i'm like where the s is hitting the f and um 
and then I'm, my next book is going to be it's going to be a book by uh, what's his name? Uh, just thinking, Blake Crouch. Blake Crouch. It's called Desert Places, and it's it's completely different than or I haven't read it yet, but from the the little blurb that I read, it's completely different from you know what I'm reading now. The you know the book I'm reading now, The Every. It's a it's like a techie, not dystopian. It's more like if modern day was more even more ridiculous with um, the social media and the the culture that the left and the right and the it's like that. It, but it's it's. It's like as if the left basically just took over and like took over the world. That's that's what the every is like. And yeah, it, it's a little nightmarish to be honest. Um the that book by uh Desert Places it's called Desert Places the plot it's going to be less about characters because I I feel like the the every is a lot more character driven. And sure, I haven't read this Desert Places yet, but I feel like it's going to be a plot. It's going to be a story that's going to be moving fast and it's going to be scarier. It's going to be very scary, not in a dystopian way, m more probably like in like somebody's getting murdered. I think there's murder involved with this one. But uh, yeah, I find that reading a book, you know, I do my work, do this, do that. Um, and instead of always turning to TV, which I love TV, but don't get me wrong, but reading a book is a really nice alternative and it clears my mind. It kind of cleans up my mind a little bit. All right, I don't know what just happened, but my computer completely just shut off in the middle of the podcast and I had to reboot. And so now I'm just gonna record this little ending for you guys. Shout out to Bob McKnight for producing. Appreciate you, my friend. Always awesome, always gets it done. If you want to be on the show, you want to call in, leave a voicemail. Maybe it's about MXPX. You want to know about something. Maybe you want me to talk about songwriting like I always do. Or maybe something completely different. Would love to hear about it. You want to talk about hot sauce? I'm down. Call in 1-360-830-6660. Would love to hear from you. All right, you guys. Until next week. Peace out.